10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire normal. Back in the year 5000 BC, someone thought of combining a variety of materials from the earth, making the most versatile construction material in the world today. That's what happened. The ancient societies in the Persian Gulf region used a mixture of lime and natural pozzolans as early as 5000 BC. The Romans were using concrete as early as the 2nd century BC. They used concrete to build the Colosseum and other amazing structures around the 1st and 2nd centuries AD. The concrete that they used contained the same hydraulic binder that is found in concrete today. This technology was lost after the fall of the Roman Empire and was not rediscovered until the mid-1700s. In 1824, Joseph Aspen patented Portland cement. Today, Portland cement combined with rock, sand, and water produces concrete. When water is added to Portland cement, a chemical reaction known as hydration takes place. Hydration produces the binder, or glue, that holds concrete together. Portland cement is the basic ingredient that provides extraordinary properties to the most amazing construction products ever made. Combining Portland cement with other ingredients such as aggregates, water, and admixtures creates concrete, one of the most versatile materials on the planet. Concrete can be molded to any shape, can flow like water, or can stand on its own. Concrete can be designed to reach strengths as slowly or as quickly as needed for virtually any application. Concrete can be stained, stamped, colored, and formed to create almost any design that is limited only by our own imagination. The versatility of Portland cement allows it to be used for a wide variety of applications. It can harden underwater and can endure the high temperatures and pressure environments of deep well applications. Several years ago, GCC had a vision of creating a brand new cement plant in Pueblo, Colorado. After many years of planning, permitting, budgeting, and construction, GCC was able to build one of the most technologically advanced cement plants in the U.S. GCC's engineering team searched the world over for the newest and best technologies to create this innovative cement plant capable of producing 1.4 million tons per year. The following video takes you on a tour of the complex processes involved in making this amazing product known as Portland cement. Have you ever wondered how cement is made? It starts with exploration to find the best raw materials to produce a very high quality product. Once a quarry plant is established, GCC drills carefully placed holes to blast the limestone free from the quarry face. The limestone boulders are then transported by a front end loader to the crusher. As you can see, this crusher is extremely powerful and able to take large boulders and reduce them to a 4 inch size at a rate of 750 tons per hour. After the crusher does its job, the material is then transported via conveyor belt to the limestone storage dome. The limestone passes under a cross belt analyzer which evaluates the material from top to bottom. This information, which is relayed to a main computer, allows for quick determination of limestone chemistry and rapid process control. The limestone dome has a piece of equipment that stacks the limestone into a semicircular pattern known as a chevron stockpile. The back and forth motion of the rake harrow causes the material to slide to the base where it is conveyed by a scraper chain system to a centrally located outlet hopper. 
This type of stacking and reclaiming system is the most efficient method to homogenize the stockpiled material, which helps create a more consistent product. The limestone then goes to the proportioning bins along with other raw materials. All of the raw materials are then combined in the proper proportions based on the mix design and then sent to the raw mill where they are ground at about 150 tons per hour into a fine powder. Choosing the right proportions is crucial in producing the desired properties of the final product. Once the raw mix is ground to sufficient size, it is conveyed to the blending silo where the mixture is homogenized using seven programmed outlets that aerate the material. From the blending silo, the homogenous raw feed is introduced to the top of a five-stage preheater tower by way of a bucket elevator. The raw feed then drops into an air slide that introduces it into the first stage of the tower. As the kiln feed falls through each of the tower stages, it is progressively heated by a countercurrent flow of hot kiln exhaust and clinker cooler gases. As the kiln feed enters stage one, it is exposed to a temperature of around 300 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, water is removed from the material. By the time the material reaches stage five at the bottom of the tower, a process that only takes about 30 seconds, the material is at a temperature of about 900 degrees Celsius. During the calcining process, carbon dioxide is driven off, leaving free lime. From stage five, the kiln feed drops into the back end of the kiln. As the material travels through the kiln, it is exposed to temperatures of up to 1500 degrees Celsius in the burning zone. The temperatures in the burning zone bring the kiln feed to a partial melt like lava in which lime and silica partially dissolve and react to form C2S and C3S. This is the turning point where the raw materials are transformed into new man-made minerals that make up the material we know as Portland cement. The material exits the kiln as nodules or pellets referred to as clinker. The photo you see here is what clinker looks like under a microscope at 500 times magnification. The kiln can produce up to 135 tons of clinker per hour. Once the clinker passes through the burning zone, it is quenched and then transported through the cooler where air is injected into the clinker bed. By the time the clinker reaches the cooler exit, it is close to 100 degrees Celsius. The material then travels up a pan conveyor to the top of the dome where it is dropped in and stored. The clinker dome, one of the largest Shot Creek dome structures in North America, can hold about 100,000 tons of clinker. From here, two underground extraction tunnels remove the clinker and deliver it to the finish mill. The finish mill grinds the clinker with gypsum at a rate of 180 tons per hour and crushes the clinker into a fine powder. The final product is transferred to GCC's four 10,000 ton shipping silos. The final product is loaded into bulk trucks or rail cars and shipped to our network of terminals or direct to our customers. The final product can be loaded at a rate of 900 tons per hour for rail cars and 400 tons per hour into bulk trailers. The Pueblo plant sets on two rail lines, the BNSF and the Union Pacific. GCC has positioned itself with a variety of terminals and cement plants from Mexico to Canada assuring their customers will receive the best product and service available. Every step along the way, from the quarry to the finish mill, GCC tests the materials to ensure the highest level of product quality. GCC employees take great pride in knowing the final product they produce is one of the best in the industry. GCC is committed and dedicated to becoming your supplier of choice.